Hey guys, how's it going? This is Tom Burkhardt from Car Ribs Daily. Quick drive review in the 2016 Volkswagen Golf TSI Automatic. This is a really, really curious car. Uh, one that I'm having a hard time figuring out. So I um, want to try to to, uh, to talk through the vehicle's uh, advantages, you know, how it, it fares in the marketplace, some of its competitors, uh, pricing, and then of course, uh, some of the great things about the Golf, of course, from Volkswagen in 2016 and 2017. So that's kind of a disorganized outline, um, but really this car is has just flummoxed me. So let's just dive right in. Um, the 2016 Golf TSI automatic runs um, a 1.8 liter turbocharged four cylinder, making 170 horsepower and 199 foot-pounds of torque through a six-speed Eisen automatic transmission. So uh, this Golf it, in particular is built in Mexico and that transmission comes out of Japan. So a little curious right from the start, uh, but it is fairly speedy. Uh, it's got really good, really enthusiastic handling, uh, but and uh, a strong urge on throttle. It feels very, very torquey and um, and is very uh, quick in general versus some of its competitors. So um, the uh, we'll touch more on like on how the car drives and some of those like hidden gems in a little bit. But first things first, let's talk about like where the golf has come from. So for many years, like uh, the Golf was just objectively superior to, to Civics and Corollas. It really just was. I mean, any any driver, um, car person or not, could get in the car and really recognize that this was a special machine that um, that was different and um, a lot more sophisticated and uh, satisfying than those sort of compact cars that it competed with. But at this stage, um, with a base price of about $25,000, going up to uh, 26 seven or so, with uh, deliver, uh, actually $26,000 even, including the delivery charge, at this point, we're sort of, we're not only competing with upper range um, Corollas and Foci, but, um, but also also with sort of entry level Camrys and Accords, because the, this is really, that's the thick of the market that those uh, vehicles are priced in. So really need its, this golf needs to up its game. It, it, it needed to, and I think it did pretty effectively, if like a little bit perplexingly. So there's some like really, really good stuff, but the car is not as instantly just better than, uh, than those other cars uh, that we mentioned. It's not even really better than the Hyundai Elantra Limited that we tested the other week with its awesome active safety features, um, HID lighting and LEDs, and uh, you know, lots of sort of premium elements that uh, are still optional on this TSI Automatic Golf. So, or T this is the this is the Golf SE TSI Automatic, I should say. So that's above from the uh, up from the S, and this SE then includes like leatherette, uh, big alloy wheels, or fairly big 17s. Uh, this really really nice uh, giant moonroof here that opens over the roof itself, and um, and a couple other details. But this Golf really needs to be. In order to have that competitive set be truly into that into the Accord Camry territory, out of just like Focus and um, perhaps Chevy Cruze five door, the car um, is uh, has evolved. So this this Golf is is just is perplexing as you can tell, a little bit a little bit disorganized in my review here. But there definitely are some elements of the Golf that are um, are huge surprise and delights because the vehicle just doesn't really. All of the features that it does include are really good. Like the shift paddles, for instance, are terrific. I mean, it's really, it really is very snappy and gives you pretty precise control of those shifts. Um, we also have, so shift paddles, um, oh, you know, existing at all in this segment is pretty special. And then we have a few levels of control for the transmission. We have just a standard drive mode, and then we have um, into the manual control where we can do manumatic and use the shift paddles and have it um, bounce off the rev limiter. Okay, well, I guess it's still shifting for us in manual mode, but we've got that manual mode for like mountain driving. And then um, if you just move the knob down from its S position, or excuse me, from its D position, that takes us into S, which is a little bit like halfway between the extremely sporty um, manual side of the gear programming and um, the traditional drive, which is optimized for economy. So um, it's really, it's nice to have that level of control, especially for a car that does uh, 25, oh, excuse me, yeah, 25 in the city and 36 on the highway, which is great um, for an overall average of 29. These are very, very good scores, and um, and 
impressive in the segment as well as um, the, the segment below and above. I mean, there's there are very few vehicles that can get that can boast that type of efficiency. Um, so that that's all really good, but and there are many many other good features in the car. So just to avoid traffic, I'm just going to turn around right here. We'll go back up this little curvy uh, curvy parkway here. So the car is is pretty speedy um, and has good steering, great great feel through that through that steering helm and um, an electromechanical setup. So uh, not guaranteed to have awesome feel there, but it does feel good. And the steering wheel itself is very premium in feel. The uh, the brakes also feel great. Handling is terrific with really good grip. We've, we're running like the color contrast of the Golf is like premium features, you know, or semi-premium features at a pretty affordable price. So uh, that's like so vague as to be almost meaningless, but what it really means to me is that like we have Pirelli tires, for example, on this Golf TSI automatic. So, uh, and you know, really just like pretty sophisticated handling in general. So this is all good. Um, other sort of surprise, other surprise and delight elements of the car uh, include the standard uh, keyless entry so you can just walk up to the car and grab its uh, doorknobs or its tailgate or anything like that without having to blip the fob. And then we also have push button start, which is nice. A lot of these features that we're mentioning are either only available on like the really premium Camrys and Accords or not available at all on cars like, um, like uh, you know, like Corolla, Civic, Focus and, and stuff like that. So these are, this, this is really just sort of a study in contrast. Where, um, where the Golf was always sort of the intellectual answer to the car. It was a car that, uh, that could do everything with like, you know, the roominess really um, just a step below Camry and Accord, but, um, but efficiency that, that outclassed those cars. And um, a little bit of nimbleness in the city and easy to park nature that set the car apart. So in 2016 and 2017, that stuff is alive, but not quite as um, as as instantly. Um, just you know, you just can't feel that on the first drive in the first block. Whereas in some previous golfs, um, you really could. I'm not sure if that's just if that's simply because um, the competitors have gotten a lot better, or while well, the golf has stayed the same, or if uh, if it's just a matter of um, the golf actually sort of getting a little bit, I mean, like, worse. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. Um, so, we're definitely still studying the car. We've had the car had it for about six days now and really enjoy driving it. It's a very satisfying drive. Um, it does everything pretty well, but it's not like slap your face, like, oh my God, who is buying these other cars? I mean, for a while, the Golf drove so well, it was almost like a like a Pontiac versus a BMW. You were like, who are these people buying these horrible cars when there's something, uh, you know, that if they drove for two seconds, they would know that it was just so much better. That's not really the case with the Golf anymore. Um, it feels sort of normal, which is good and bad. Um, it's good because it doesn't have like the quirky stuff that used to be a factor in, um, in the Golf. Sorry, I've been playing with the paddles so now I was confused. Um, it doesn't have like the quirky factor, you know, Volks, where Volkswagens used to have sort of like the brakes felt kind of grabby versus a normal car and um, the, none of the buttons and stuff made sense. I mean, a lot of that stuff has been really smoothed out. Perfect example is this seat control. We've got manual seats for fore and aft um, and then of course this like this pump that you can pump up or down and, um, and change the, the pitch of the seat. But we do have a, a power control for the recline which previously like Americans could not understand how to recline the seat. They just thought that the lever on the side was going to be the recline and when it wasn't they were just like oh my god what did I do. So Volkswagen has smoothed out some of that sort of that quirkiness in the car um, which is great which I think is really really good but um, they may have, uh, have, have smoothed it off a little bit too much because the car feels pretty normal like we said. But this is all around town. So let's talk about like where the car really, really comes into its own because I just discovered it right now actually. And it's on the highway. I mean, on the highway, this Golf TSI SE automatic really drives vastly superior to, um, to its Camry and uh, Accord base models that we'd be comparing it with um, and vastly superior to the, the Focus and, um, and Chevrolet Cruze type or, or like Elantra type of vehicles as well. So these are, that's really where this car comes into its own um, and where you get a sense of, of 
what you're paying for, what premium you're paying for, for that um, German engineering. That premium really is like instantly clear on the highway. With many, many base four cylinder um, compacts and, um, and base midsize models, you really have to, I mean, they get on the highway and they're just sort of like, you just, mostly the compacts for example, for this example. You get them on the highway and they are not very enthusiastic. They have very, very little passing power. Um, the steering is like not accurate at keeping the car in the lane. Um, and you just sort of have to have to force it to go. It wants to cruise at 70, for example, and every mile per hour above that, you kind of have to force it. Whereas with this Golf um, and many, many German cars, and I think almost all German cars, you could say, really are very different in that regard on the highway in that they're just sort of perfect. It just goes down the lane um, like a rock star and feels like even at um, even at super legal speeds, like or super illegal speeds, like an 85, 90, I mean, not that I'm driving this way, but... It, at those speeds, the car still has a ton more to give. It feels like it wants to, it will happily go as quick as you want um, and do so safely and fairly economically. And that's very, very different from its competitors. Um, really any, any Japanese, Korean, and American car really sort of is out of its element once you start asking for more speed on the highway. It really just, you have to really push it. Whereas this car, you could get up to like 100, 105 miles an hour and really cruise there all day. It really is that good. Um, and that just speaks to uh, speaks to its origins, coming from a place where you can drive that, that speed on the highway. So really, um, Let's the car come into its own then on the highway and uh sweet we got, we got a challenger srt next to us uh and was able to mash him around the corner and uh so that's really where the golf sort of comes into comes into its own if you're doing big miles as a commuter there's no better car for uh for a feeling of sophistication and value for money once you are in that highway lane Whereas like around town, it's not as instantly clear that um, that the Golf is better than um, than like the new Civic, for example. They're all, they both just sort of do their thing um, and are uh, pretty unobtrusive and inoffensive about uh, about that the way they drive. But on the highway, um, this Golf is is just better than a lot of those other cars. It's uh, it's quieter and it just has more confidence and more of a sense that you're not taxing the vehicle at all. You're not really pushing it to its limits, um, which is a really, really big thing. I mean, it really, it, it sounds kind of, it's, it's hard to convey in words, but it is a big thing because it really, uh, it really makes a difference on that second hour of the trip, for example, or when you're, when you really want to just want to have a car that is great and doesn't need too much second guessing. Um, or, or any second guessing really of how good it's going to be um, on the highway day in and day out, you know, doing the doing the grind. So we're on the highway right now. Um, we're about 70 miles an hour, and uh, as you can tell, very very calm, very chill, and uh, and just have a level of sophistication that is sort of missing in uh, in cars that are the Golf's rivals.